Our 351, <laughs> the 4 o'clock update a little bit earlier. What's it say, Rob? Okay, I'm going to turn around and look at it with you. Okay, down to 130 mile per hour winds. That is good. Unfortunately, it is a little bit slower northwest at 10. That pressure at 9. 38. So uh, again, uh, we are seeing a storm that is slowly, very slowly, very painfully weakening. We're still at a category four, but we go down another five miles an hour. We'll be down into category three. And I'm getting the textual information uh, from the National Hurricane Center right now and just want to see if we have uh, some specific reports that they may have included in their report. Uh, let's see. Uh, no, this is more general. It's not giving me anything uh, with respect to um, the, any kind of extra wind gusts or observational data. That's kind of what I'm looking for at this point. Uh, but uh, uh, their headline is Ida moving northwestward over southeastern Louisiana. Catastrophic storm surge, extreme winds and flash flooding continue across southeast Louisiana. Changes with this advisory, the hurricane warning along the coast of Louisiana from Morgan City to Intracosa City has been changed to a tropical storm warning. That's uh, understandable. Tropical storm warning from Cameron to Intracosa City, uh, Louisiana has been discontinued. So as we've been saying, it's looking better and better. Uh, for us, um, hurricane warning in effect, Morgan City to the mouth of the Pearl River, including Lake Pontchartrain, Lake Maripod, and the New Orleans metro area. That hasn't changed. Uh, so uh, the big changes are uh, the l threat level for Acadiana continues to decrease, and the threat level off to the east continues. Uh, here we go. Uh, Dulac just reported a sustained wind to 93. We showed you that with a gust to 135. Florida Coastal Monitoring Program Observing Station at South Lafouche Airport recently reported a sustained wind of 91 with a gust to 122 and a sustained wind of 51 miles an hour gust to 82 just reported at Lakefront Airport in NOLA. So uh, still seeing super high wind gusts and again storm is weakening. But one thing I am noticing and you never want to see lightning associated with tropical activity, but we're still picking up on cloud to ground lightning and this is going to this is just means it's going to be super rough in the Galliano area. It already is. Uh, this squall right here is going to be quite devastating more than likely. Let me know if we need to uh, go to another source, but I'm going to get into the velocity mode here and uh, kind of take a look at that. And Bradley, you want to just go ahead and uh, query that. Uh, well, I can query the velocity, but uh, sometimes it's easier doing it on, on the desk. But let's see if we got a velocity here. Uh, 119. Um, let's see. Uh, let's do this again. Make sure we have this question mark. Um, and uh, Bradley may have touched it. And, and let's just see. Here we go. 121, 110. Uh, so yeah, these are this is what we're measuring in the clouds, and you can get even higher than that uh, in that uh, tropical rain band, and you see that tropical rain band moving right through the Galliano area. So again, these velocities, and again, here's your key. Um, we're looking through the uh, Slidell Doppler. Uh, blue means uh, the air is moving toward the radar. Red means it's moving away. So that's why we have south winds here and northwest winds here. But again, you can see uh, these winds are just incredible across uh, much of the region. Uh, let's move it on over and we can kind of do some queries here as well in around the Homa area. Uh, let's see what kind of winds we're showing. Uh, you know, these winds uh, all aloft, uh, but some of them could work. They'd be working their way down to the ground and uh, uh, this right here, uh, 114, uh, you're seeing 110s, 120s, uh, 128, 125. Those are, those are some pretty bad velocities with that storm. And here locally, uh, we don't even have to worry about velocity data. I mean, we do have a lot going on, uh, but just uh, mainly eastern portions of Acadiana, the big action across southeast Louisiana where this donut is uh, looking awfully rough here. Let's put it in motion since we're using uh, Power Doppler 3. You'll see a nice smooth uh, uh, motion there. And again, that's uh, looking through the sweeps uh, with the National Weather Service, but going back to our radar, smoother looking. And then we put, just put that in motion there. And again, you can see uh, how intense this storm is and how we're picking up on uh, that part of uh, the storm that's going through the Golden Meadow area as well. Very intense hurricane.
And you know, I, you know, I've been doing this for uh, since 1985. Okay, what is that? 35, 36 years. I've been tracking storms on the Gulf Coast. I moved to Acadiana in 1988, and in all my career, last year, this year, you know, Rita and Katrina, they were high-end events. But uh, last year and this year, we're seeing these incredibly powerful, catastrophic storms doing damage as they're moving inland and storms that are not weakening as they start interacting with land, storms that are maintaining their intensity for several hours after landfall. And we saw that with Laura last year. We saw that with Michael the year before. You saw that with Harvey a couple of years earlier. And uh, this seems to be the new paradigm uh, that we're not just seeing hurricanes, but we're seeing major hurricanes making major impacts. And over the longer term, you're looking at more and more damage potential as we continue to have uh, folks in harm's way in Louisiana uh, much of us are in harm's way just by uh, because we live in land and we're not living large and condos down by the coastline we're just trying to live and work and we're seeing uh, these type of storms really setting us back and uh, these these are the type of storms that set you back months and years uh, just talk to the folks in Lake Charles a year later